Welcome to the Amazing Grace Bible class. Today's class is on location at the Tennessee State Prison. In just a few moments, we'll enjoy our class time together, and the audience will be composed largely of inmates here, men who know something about prohibitions on their freedom. Today's lesson is going to be on freedom, the real freedom we know through Jesus Christ. I hope you'll stay tuned and be part of today's class. I think you'll find it to be one of the most interesting you've ever experienced. We'll see you in just a minute. This special edition of the Amazing Grace Bible Class is made possible through the cooperation of the Tennessee Department of Correction. Special thanks to Warden Jack Morgan. Hey, how y'all doing? Good to see you. All right. Yeah. yeah. Well, we finally got started here. There we go. Hey, again to the Amazing Grace Bible class. We're in the chapel now of the Tennessee State Prison, and we're going to enjoy our class time here. Nick Boone's leading our singing as he does each week for our class. Let's enjoy How Great Thou Art. been raised from the dead to new life. We know that our old life, our old sinful self, was nailed to the cross with Christ, and so the power of sin that held us was destroyed. Sin is no longer our boss. When a man is dead, he is free from the power of sin. Eastern Europe right now, and you look at what's happening in Russia, and you think about the changes made for the sake of freedom. You think about what happened last year in China, and the hundreds of people who died for the, for the sake of freedom. I know freedom's on your mind. 
Because each of you men right now have some limitations, some prohibitions on your freedom. Freedom's precious to every one of us. During the course of this lesson and for this lesson, I interviewed earlier this week two men, Willie and David. Talked with them about their life here at the prison. Talked with them about their faith in God, their belief, their Christian spirit. And we began by talking about the way life is here, the limitations on freedom. And I want you now to watch with me as these two men talk about their living here. Uh, this is, the, I guess, the worst penitentiary system because all the people that are those in most room is sitting here and they lock up in the home and eventually let them out. That when you on a daily basis, you see things going to happen that you just couldn't imagine unless you was here. And people see what's on TV, and it's not like it is on TV. It's fact, it's worse than it is on TV because the mental strain, the frustration trying to get things done, the health problems and stuff like that. If a person out there is really thinking about doing something wrong, he needs to take a close look at himself and think about is he going to be the rest of his life. You got a small cell that you're in. You're always told what to do, when you go in the cell, when you come out. You're told when you go eat. You just got to shower when you get ready. But you're told everything else. And then when you are sick, I mean, if you're very sick, if you're not sick enough to be in the hospital, you have to get up and go to the dining room or whatever, no matter how sick you feel. If they don't hospitalize you, you got to get up and take care of yourself. And then if you do something wrong, they put you in a hole and you punish. And when they bring you out of the hole, you're handcuffed. You go to the shower, they lock you in the shower. They bring you out the shower, they handcuff you back. They carry you back in the hole. And it's just not the life to live for a human being. It's just not the life to live at all. So I tell anybody, think and think carefully, because this is not the place to be. Go to church. That's the place to be. And help somebody else stay out of here. Help other people. Freedom. It's a precious thing. You men more than anybody else in the world know that. You know, we all have some kind of limitations on our freedom. The older I've gotten, the more I've learned that nobody is absolutely free. If you're out in the world, there's the pressure of responsibility, there are financial burdens. You want to be free from strain. You want to be free from disappointment. You want to be free from pain. Sometimes I'd like to be free from just the law of gravity, just to be able to fly, just to go anywhere I want to. We want to be free. But the longer you live, the more you realize nobody Nobody is totally free. And sometimes we begin to think, can't, can't I be free? Isn't there something that can free my spirit and free my soul? And even though none of us can be totally free in every dimension of life, here's where the good news comes in. You can be free with regard to the most important things this world has to offer. Jesus said in John 8, 32, you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. Well, that's powerful. What truth and what freedom. And then Paul says in Romans 8, verses 1 and 2, he said, Therefore there is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus, because through Christ Jesus the law of the Spirit of life set me free. That's what I want. I'm not sure exactly, maybe you're not sure what all Christ Jesus is willing to do through his law of the Spirit, but it sets you free what today's lesson is going to be about. We may not be free in every sense, but we can be free about the really important things. And to be free there, you've got to be in Jesus. The same two men who spoke to us a moment ago. I want them to say something now about their relationship with Christ and some of the freedom they enjoy therein. My father died in 1981. And that, that hurt me deeply. And then I found out that my children was not a member of the Lord's church. And that hurt. And so I spent a many days just crying and crying and crying and crying. Then I began to see the things that if I had done in my life maybe a different way, I could have maybe aided my children better or aided my father. I knew then that I had went the wrong way. 
And so I decided to turn around and just accept Christ back. And that's him going to take me back and forgive me and let me serve him. Because I, I believe now that nothing in this world is worth not serving the Lord. Nothing. You're both Christians. Yes. Yeah. And how does, how does that make this very difficult experience? How's it made it different? It, mean, it makes it better. It makes it better you know, because when you learn how to handle different situations we have in here. You learn how to get along better with the inmates, how long I get along better with the administration, and how not to let things bother you, and how to always try to help somebody else. That's worse than one thing is knowing that no matter what happens here, that you've always got God on your side and Him to look to. That, that's a big thing, you know, being here, not being able to do things and being restricted from things you can do and everything. Willie and David know something about the freedom that's in Christ. Many of you do too. Some others of you may not. What freedom do you get from being in Jesus? I want to propose to you three things. Number one, there is the freedom from sin. I don't know what you think the most frightening word in the English language is, but let me tell you the word that's most frightening to me. It's sin. And if it's not sin, it's the devil. And frankly, you're talking about the same thing because the devil uses that most powerful weapon, sin, to get to every one of us. I don't want you to misunderstand. I'm not afraid of what the devil can do to me, but I am afraid of what the devil can get me to do because he's the most cunning of all the forces in the universe. And he'll manipulate you and tempt you and fool you, and he does every single one of us. And the problem is, Romans 6.23 says, the wages of sin is death. See, that's the payment for sin. And don't be confused about what, what death is there. When, when I say death, I know what you think of. You think of the same thing I do. You think of somebody lying in a casket and, and just passing away. That, that's not really what's being said there. The word death means separation. That's all it means. And when you think about somebody physically dying, what's happened? Their soul, their spirit has left that physical body. That's why they're dead. There's a separation. The Bible says the wages, the payment of sin is death. It means the payment's a separation. A separation from God. And I want to tell you, there's nothing worse in this universe than being separated from God. Especially when you consider that for the prospect of an eternity. Be separated from God. But you and I know that sin has its own payment on this earth too. It separates us from our dignity. It separates us from our families separates us from our children. It separates us from people we love and that love us. It separates us from everything. And the bad news is I'm a sinner. And you are too. And I'm no, I'm no better than you and I'm no worse than you. We're all in the same boat. We're sinners. But now I've got the good news. Good news is even though we're all sinners, Jesus Christ sets us free from sin. I don't know how much each one of you know about Jesus, but let me tell you who he was. He was God come in the flesh. And the Son of God took on human form, and he lived a perfect life. And at the age of about 33, they took him to a hill and nailed him to a cross. And the only perfect person who ever lived died like the worst criminal so that all of our sin could be put on him. Here's what Paul says about it in 2 Corinthians 5.21. Listen to this most powerful verse I believe in the Bible. God made him who had no sin. Who's that talking about? Jesus. God made him who had no sin to be sin for our sakes so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. You know what hope I have of heaven? You know what hope you have of heaven? It's not how good I am. It's not whether or not I've ever made a mistake in life because that's already settled. We've made more mistakes than we'll ever count. You know what my hope of heaven is? It's Jesus Christ. If I let my sin be his sin so that I can become his righteousness. And by the way, do you know how I know that happened? 
You may remember from reading the Bible in your own private time how Jesus hung on that cross and some of the things he said. The thing that touches my heart most was when he said, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Do you know that was the only time throughout the history of eternity that the Son of God was separated from the Father? Even while he lived on this earth, he could talk to the Father and the Father would talk to him. But when he hung on that cross, he looked around in his pain and he says, God, where are you? And you know why the Father had gone? Because our sin was on Jesus. And it separated him from the Father. Romans 6, though, is a beautiful passage that says if we come to Jesus, we can heap our sin on him. He's already made that payment, and we can know, we can know freedom from that sin. Romans 6, Paul is talking to all those who've been baptized into Jesus, and he said when you've been baptized into Christ, you've been buried with him. And it's the passage that Dan read to us a minute ago, verse 5. I want to read it again. If we have been united with him like this in his death, we will certainly also be united with him in his resurrection. For we know that our old self was crucified with him so that the body of sin might be done away with. We'll no longer be slaves to sin because anyone who has died has been freed from sin. You can know freedom from sin. Willie talked about that freedom in the interview we had this week. Yes, I'm free. I'm free from sin. I'm free from the wrong I've done to other people and the wrong I've done to my family and the wrong I did to the Lord because I, became a, I was a member of the church when I was a young man and I left the church and so I know that I did him wrong and so I, I feel all that guilt it just it's all gone now and I'm happy about that but you know freedom from sin is not the only thing Jesus sets us free from he also sets us free from fear. I don't know if you'll admit it, but I'll admit it to you. I'm scared of some things sometimes. Sometimes I'm scared of other people. I sometimes give a passing thought to sickness. Every one of us would have to admit that if we heard the word that we had inoperable cancer and just a little while to live, that would probably send a chill down our spine. Sometimes I get a little scared of the future. Sometimes we fear losing things. What do you do about your fears? Well, you can hide them. Or you can play the tough guy and pretend you have no fears. But there are better answers than these. Jesus can take your fears away. There's nothing I have to worry about doing. There's nothing I have to worry about happening to me. Jesus takes that for me. Years ago, when the Mennonites, back about the Civil War, were, were debating whether or not they could participate in the war, or whether or not they ought to stay out of it, they had a big conference. And there was an old Mennonite arguing with a young Mennonite. And the old Mennonite wanted everybody to go to war. The young Mennonite said, I don't want, to, don't want any part of it. And the old Mennonite said, look, if, if we don't go to war, these soldiers are going to come in and they're going to take everything you own. The young Mennonite said, no, sir, because I don't own anything. When I became a Christian, it all, it all went to Jesus. And the old Mennonite looked at him and says, but you know, they'll come through here and they'll kill you. The young fellow looked at him and said, no, sir. I've already died. I've already died to Jesus. And the new life that he's given me in return will last forever. And the old Mennonite looked at him and got a little sour and he said, but they'll make you suffer. And the young man looked back and he said, well, he said, if they do, I hope I remember what Jesus said. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. And the young man looked back at the old man and he said, you know what, sir? He said, there's not much you can do to somebody who doesn't own anything and who's already dead and who's not afraid to suffer. You see, if you're in Jesus, there's not a whole lot of reason to fear. You know what Paul said in Philippians 1.21? He said, for me to live is Christ, but to die would be gain. How many people you know that are so fearless of death that they can stand and say, if I died, I'd be better off? 
Jesus can free you from fear. David said much the same thing in an interview this week. Well, the fear of my faith in God is that in here, if you're, like I say, you're confined so much and everything, and I don't feel that confinement because I know I've got him on my side. He's freed me from that. Because no matter what they've done to me here, I've been locked up and I can't do this, can't I know I'm going to read the Bible and I can pray, and I feel that freedom to be able to worship my God as I want to. And that's, that's a big thing to me here. It's something they can't take away from me. There's one final thing that Jesus can offer you freedom for, not just freedom from sin, freedom from fear. Jesus will offer you freedom for eternity. You see, that's why Paul wasn't afraid of dying, because he knew he had a better place waiting for him. I want you to listen to what Paul says in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, beginning at verse 51. He said, We will not all sleep, but we will all be changed in a flash, in the twinkling of an eye at the last trumpet, for the trumpet will sound, the dead will be raised imperishable, and we will be changed. For the perishable must clothe itself with the imperishable, and the mortal with immortality. And when the perishable has been clothed with the imperishable, and the mortal with immortality, then the saying that is written will come true. Death has been swallowed up in victory. O death, where is your victory? O grave, where is your sting? Death frightens anybody who doesn't know that there's something after it. Jesus frees you from that fear. None of us will ever be totally free. But you can right now be free from the really frightening things of life. From sin, from fear, from death itself. One of my favorite stories in the Bible is in Acts 16. Paul and Silas are in prison and there's an earthquake in the middle of the night and the chains fall off of them and the jailer there is so afraid that all the prisoners are going to escape that he takes a sword and he starts to run himself through and Paul's voice comes through the darkness and he says, don't. We're all here. Do you know, by the way, why Paul and Silas didn't run away? When the chains fell off. They were already free. Didn't have to be freer than that. They were already free. Listen as we begin to close our lesson to what Willie and what David say to all of us. I believe people look at me really and see we're in prison and God has helped us and helped us to overcome come this, that this is probably the worst situation a person can be in. And they know if we can help us, he can help them. They, didn't, they need him on our side. That name on God's promises. He promised it, he said it, I believe it, and that's it. Let's bow for a word of prayer. Would you bow with me? Almighty God, we trust you and we look to you as the one who takes away all of our fears and offers us the freedom from that fear, the freedom from sin, and the freedom even from the power and the sting of death. May we look to Jesus, Father. May we obey the gospel that he died for so that we can enjoy the real freedom that you want us to have. In the name of Jesus we pray. Amen. Bible class, we have a Bible research question for your personal study. Last week's question was, why did Christ criticize the church at Laodicea? And the correct answer to that is because it was lukewarm, and that's found in Revelation 3, verses 14 through 16. We're going to give this week's Dixon New Analytical Study Bible to one of the class members here at the prison, to Willie Cole, who was one of our interviewees and a fine Christian man. And Willie, I want you to take this. I know you'll use it well. And congratulations, brother. 
Our television recipient this week is going to be Betty Woods of Louisville, Illinois. Betty views over station WCEE-TV, Channel 13, which is broadcast from Mount Vernon, Illinois. I know many of you are anxious to hear the new research question, so listen, here it is. How many gates are in the wall of the new Jerusalem? Look up the answer to that and send it in to us, and we may send you one of these beautiful Bibles. We want you to stay tuned next week to the Amazing Grace Bible class. You'll enjoy the wonderful lesson we have then as well. We'll look forward to seeing you. For whoever wants to save his life will lose it. So the last will be first, and the first will be last. For everyone who exalts himself will be humbled, and he who humbles himself will be exalted. Those statements are found in the Bible and are further explained in a booklet entitled, What Price Freedom? Request a copy by writing Amazing Grace, Box 419, Madison, Tennessee, 37116. Ask for offer 504. Reading, writing, arithmetic. Those are the three R's, but how about that fourth R, righteousness? If you missed that course while growing up and still want to take it, it's available through this eight-lesson correspondence course covering the Old and the New Testaments. It's available free. Simply write Amazing Grace, Box 419, Madison, Tennessee, 37116, and ask for offer number three. By the way, I hope you get an A.